before we get started, just make sure that you guys either sign in with this QR code or the link in the description. All you have to do is sign in with that link and it lets us know it goes through our referral. So it just basically adds another person that's done it through a referral. It really helps the club and our school. So uh, please do that. Thank you. Also, guys, just a reminder that the IBMZ online career fair is going to be coming up soon. Uh, we have the dates on screen. And um, if you're a Western student, it's going to be April 12th. And just know that you need to get your Explore badge, uh, just the concepts. So, you know, keep doing that. And uh, we hope to see you there. All right. Unix System Services. So what is a Unix System Services? Well, you know, if you, you know, we've been using VS Code, that is, a, that is one way to access the mainframe, right? Unix System Services is just simply another way to access the mainframe, but you get to do it through a Linux environment. So, you know, if you're a terminal wizard, you know, just Vim and just all these, you know, cool pseudo whatever, then this is for you. OK, you can see this penguin right here holding his foot. That is the Linux uh, mascot. OK, so it uses a shell, which is a command line interface used to have a conversation with the system pretty much. Um, and to sign into USS, uh, use the same password that you would for signing into the rest of the system. So if you need your password, I'm sure you have your ID by now, but if you need your password, it's just on VS Code. You open up that module and it's just like right at the bottom, right below the VSC picture. So let's go. All right, so first we're going to SSH into the, um, yeah, into the uh, USS server. So we're gonna go back to VS Code and we're gonna open up a terminal here. So terminal at the top and then new terminal essentially uh, you're just get it you're just uh, accessing another system through the terminal so there's no uh, you know graphical user interface we're gonna go SSH and then our uh, user ID which I'm just gonna scroll up so we can see it it is Z minus Z four five eight six two and then at so basically when you're SSHing just a general rule of thumb this is the uh, this is the username and then the host name or the IP is just going to be you can find this on the explore slides but it's going to be the same for everyone so do not use my user ID but use this you know use this uh, IP it's going to ask you for your password and it might ask if it's your first time it will probably ask you for a fingerprint so just all you have to do for that is type yes don't worry it's a uh, it's secure I don't think IBM has any malicious intentions with your data well yeah I don't think so um, all right, so let's just wait for it to load up and you can see we're in. So if we, you know, if we LS, which is list directories, okay, we don't have anything yet actually, which is good because that's our next step, but we are in the terminal. So you can see the directory, we're in our home directory, which is just Z slash our user ID. Um, and then we want to execute USS dash setup. So I tried to LS, which is list the, the, the files and directories, but you can see we have to actually execute this. So give us a little welcome message. And now if we type LS, um, we get in there and we see that we have all of these files. So our next step is going to be to, um, in the Zoe Explorer, click the magnifying glass, click uh, next to our profile folder. So this is not going to be the same. We're going to go to the Unix system services tab here. So we've been using the data sets, but we're going to do uh, that one. So this is the profile I made, Z Explorer. So I'm going to click the magnifying glass. And what I'm going to do is type the same thing that is in the terminal. Uh, this and then the Z slash our user ID. So 862, create a new filter and then click enter. And you can see, boom. So we are able to access all of our files through um, uh, VS Code. If you guys don't want to use terminal, that's fine. You can just get them all here. Perfect. Um, but yeah, so uh, I just want to go through some common Linux commands though. So if we do these are just the ones that we're going to be using. So we already did ls list directories. You can also do ls-l, by the way, which shows your permissions. Uh, I want to show you cd, though. So um, if we actually go into a directory, you can do current directory. And then I see we have one called uh, directory1. And then you can see we are now in current uh, in directory1. And then if we do pwd, print working directory, it just prints what directory we're in. Um, all right, so next step. So in the home directory, when I say home directory, I mean uh, our user ID. We're going to type ls-l scramble.sh. So just like we were talking about um, with our permissions, uh, we can see we can see we can also get it for a specific file, right? So it shows up with an X in the four spot, meaning um, you can also you can read and write to it, but you can also execute it here. 
So that's perfect. That's because that's what we're going to be doing. Um, so we're going to execute the command. So if you don't know how to execute a compiled binary, and this is on any system, it's in your current directory dot slash. So if you're in the directory, you put a dot and that tells you current directory. And then we do that. Okay, so it gave us some instructions. You should. It gave us a usage example. It takes an input and from a file and takes an, uh, rotates letters by a number of positions. So um, this is actually an example of the Caesar cipher. Um, if you know what that is, then maybe you'll be able to just get it first try. In fact, you probably will if you know how to solve a Caesar cipher. So if you're interested in solving it, then um, go ahead and look look up what that is. But if not, uh, we'll just get into it here. So basically it's telling us, okay, we want to execute it and we pass this parameter file.txt and this is the scramble factor. So the file that we're going to be testing it on is secret.txt. So we'll do uh, scramble.sh and then the, the full path to it. So Z and then our uh, Z user ID, which is four, five, um, eight, six, two, and then secret dot actually, no, sorry. It's in public. Okay, so we're going to type the uh, what program we want to run, which is scramble.sh, and then you can see they gave us the directory here. So I'll just copy this, and then right right click it in to uh, paste it in VS Code, or it's just general. You can you can do Control Shift. Get used to doing Control Shift V in terminals because Control V doesn't work on a lot of them. It does in this one, but it's just general good practice. And then let's say we want to do a scramble factor of four. Okay, so it's processing, process, processing. Okay, that's definitely not right. All right, so what I want you guys to do is um, actually look up the Caesar cipher and how to decipher a Caesar cipher. Ooh, okay, those bars. Um, yeah, so get that and then um, figure that out. If you can't figure it out, come back here because I'm about to show you guys the answer, but I want you guys to figure it out for yourself. If you didn't get it, this is the answer. So 17, you can see it'll take 17 seconds. And you can see that we have successfully unscrambled the message. So our next step is going to be to um, move it into a file. So how you can do that is just um, the command, just an arrow pointing to the file that you want to do. So we will go ahead, stay in this directory, go there, and then point. we're pointing to ussout.txt. And um, it's doing what it did, processing, but it's just not giving us the output because instead of writing it out to the terminal essentially we're telling it okay right now just write this out to a um another file so it has created that file and now if we type cat which is how you uh print files to the terminal we can see that boom it processed and then boom we have the message beautiful so next step is um i'm just learning another command so displaying the disk you should so if we just type du or just write off it'll show us like that but we don't really get much information about the units, stuff like that. So you can actually pass it parameters. So we're going to do dash a K dash a is telling it that we want to show it, show it all directories inside and below this directory. And, um, dash K is just telling it that we want to show it in kilobytes. So go ahead and you can see here, we have all of the, uh, every single directory, all of their disk usages, and, um, it's showing us in kilobytes. So these, these units are in kilobytes. All right, so now we're going to learn how to append to a file. So what we've just done is we use that to create a new file up here, this uh, pointing to USS out. But um, if we if we uh, executed that again with the disk usage, it would simply just overwrite the file and delete what we had. That is not what we want to do. What we want to do is um, append to the file. So appending means just adding to, on to the end of something. So we're going to actually append. I want you guys to try this yourself, obviously, but if you can't get it, that's okay. We'll just append it. So we'll, we're going to append disk usage with the same parameters that we gave it double pointer to ussout.txt. And then let's cat it again, just to make sure that it's working. Um, and then you can see here that we have, it starts up here. So we have processing, processing. That's the end of it or the end of what we used to have. And then we just added all these things here. So perfect. Yeah. All right. So 
for your final test of your Linux skills, I want you guys to append, okay, keyword append, the current date to our ussout.txt file using the built-in date command. So if we use type in date, we get our date there. But um, what we're going to do is append that. So I want you guys to try that out for yourselves. Pause the video. Uh, if you can't get it, that's okay. We're just going to append it. So we type date. Oh, yeah, if you can't get it and you accidentally overwrite the file, this is how you would overwrite the file if you did this. I'm obviously not going to execute this, but um, this would just only, we would, if we catted it out, it would only have the date. So let's make sure that we add the um, this thing here or this extra arrow to append to it. We'll execute that. And then we will cat the ussl.txt. Perfect. Dates at the bottom. Beautiful. All right. So that's it. We're going to go back into our datasets tab on VS Code and go back into our public.jcl and we'll do check uss1. Submit that job there. And you can see it's active. We're not going to let it go until we see that beautiful 000, and we got it there. So we'll head back into USS and uh, on on Explore, and obviously, you know, read what they said here if you're more interested in um, USS. But it's like it's it's pretty much just a Linux environment on the mainframe, right? It's just another way to talk to the mainframe. So what is USS? Okay, I kind of just gave it away. Uh, program language used only on mainframes? No, it is not a language at all. It is a um, environment. Okay, it's just it's just like an it's just Linux, which is an operating system, a virtual operating system. Another way to use the ZOS operating system. Um, so it, it we're gonna say this one because this is what they're they're getting at. Um, when talking about the USS, what is a shell? Um, all right, so this was also in our slides at the beginning. So if you guys can get this, think about it, think about it. It's an interface used to have a conversation with the system. So you can use the same login as you do for USS for the rest of the system. True. Um, yeah, so we'll submit that quiz. Should get perfect. All right, perfect. Um, and then like always, these uh, these uh, slides in the PDF, I just went through uh, like through my PowerPoint, but I put in the slideshow each step that this all the steps that each slide is associated with. So if you need some extra stuff, but we're just gonna check the JCL submission, which is gonna go through. I'm certain of it because we got zero 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 zero, so we got these points just for clicking submit. But we need to get the black boxes. And we got them. All right, that's amazing. So we'll close these. And the next one, this video for um, the video for all three of these are already up. So make sure you guys continue on with these three code, learn Python, Rex, learn Rex, and wrap up is uh, Python on the mainframe. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. But thanks for watching.